All right. So here I am in the new Outlook. So why did I show the web Outlook first? Of course, just to reiterate, it's because it, it's a virtually identical experience. So here I am in the new Outlook. I've switched my uh, toggle button over into using the new Outlook. If this seems too scary for you, if you are someone where your organization has turned this toggle off, it's not visible to you yet, those sort, you know, go to Outlook on the web. If you want to understand what the new Outlook experience is going to be, use your mailbox online because that's the experience. Um, there's going to be things that you like. There's going to be things that you don't like because I really will say it's not that it's bad. It's just different. It's not what we're used to. And so I'm going to anger every help desk out here right now by saying, be the squeaky wheel. If you want to try it out, try and put a ticket in and see if they will create a group specifically yes, for do. you in the Microsoft Seriously. Admin Center. This can help you be a champion in your organization for promoting and trying this out and getting it used, right. getting used to it before everyone else adopts. And then you can kind of be that go-to person. I mean, from a, from an IT perspective is we, we look for people like this all the time to be exactly. those initial champions and adopters because it helps us train the users later on. Right. But yeah, and it, this is an inevitable these are things that you change. can certainly do through Microsoft 365 is you can set up right. groups to target that kind you of You know, stuff. Microsoft can hedge on these changes. I don't want to, you know, overcommit them. They, they sometimes, you know, they get a lot of pushback. You know, we've seen it with OneNote, but be ready. Don't be caught off guard by this change. You know, when, when Microsoft starts letting us opt out of it, you know, that's, it's going to be a big deal for people. Yep. So here I am in, in the new Outlook. So it it really does look just like what we were looking at. We have this new expanded left navigation. It integrates things like to-do and, and all of those things. So you're not going to see some of those traditional type navigation items. You're going to see an expanded view. You have that simplified ribbon. So kind of more simple things. And you're going to see some new stuff like snooze, sweep, things that have been around in the web for a a while now, but Holly, what is what does Sweep do? I I I okay. straight up just I do not know what Sweep does. I love Sweep. So Sweep is one of those things that sits a little bit between mailbox cleanup rules and like focused inbox. So Sweep. So let's say I get this Microsoft Power Automate newsletter mm -hmm. and I like to read it, but they pile up in my mailbox. So I can click on sweep and it basically says, always keep the latest message and then move the rest from the inbox folder to the deleted items. So it's like, a, it's, a, it's a more complex rule, but it allows us to have some flexibility over like what we're doing with messages. So it always gets rid of the old ones and lets us keep the newest one. It, it allows us to say, take everything in the inbox and all future messages and move it here. Um, so it's it's just this sweep rule. This particular one, always keep the latest message and move the rest from the inbox folder. Sometimes we were doing uh, things like that with like quick actions. I think those sort you know, like quick action buttons. Mm -hmm. And now you it's just sort of pre-programmed in there. So it's it's a great tool. I, I really like it. So here, um, this one, always move messages older than 10 days. So again, I depending like on those uh, like service now alerts, hey, don't just put them in your junk. Don't just delete them all. Keep them, look at them. But we know in the service now world, they pile up. So just like let there be kind of a natural falling off of those things. Do you have the ability to mm -hmm. configure uh, some of those settings for sweep, or is it just, hey, this is out of the box? I think it's it going to be more of an out of the box thing. If you wanted to get into some more complexities, you probably could build a, build a rule, a more complex rule. Yeah. But I know, I know, I've seen some people. And we're just going to go into settings because I want to talk about some of the the new settings that you have available to them. Um, but but these are some different things that you can um, kind of conf like. Do you see it? It's not letting me configure it. It's just on or off. And sweep is a distinct area outside of rules. So it's not, it's not like a part of it potentially. So 
One of the other things, and some of, of our, our viewers and listeners have noticed that if you have Microsoft 365, we're storing settings in the cloud now. So you may have gotten notifications, things like that, that your signature is now stored in the cloud. And this is another little thing that Microsoft is working to get us off premises, uh, out of our local drive and into the cloud so that no matter where we're using Outlook, we have our signature. Um, so it's little things like that that we're going to see. And one of the other kind of expanded features here, and this is something that I, I love. I was just showing this off the other day. In calendar and work hours and locations, you can now set up a, a more flexible work location, locale. So if I work Mondays, I work half days in the office and half days remote at home, or I work a hybrid schedule. I'm in the office three days and at home too. I can set that up. And um, traditionally in Outlook, you set your weekly schedule. It assumed that all of us work the same hours every day. Mm -hmm. Whereas we know we've worked, you know, especially in like our service desk organization, we have people that work, maybe work different shifts. They'll work split shifts. They'll do different things. And you can now configure that here in Outlook. And this talks to teams as well. So, you know, you're kind of setting up your contact card. But I just, my hope is that we're kind of showing you like the new Outlook is really the old web outlook. Yep. It's 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 out there. It's available for you to try. So if you don't see this toggle switch, try using your outlook your your outlook online. So try using your mailbox online because if you can get used to using these features and functions, these expanded settings, some of the expanded feature sets, the look and the feel, you're going to be that much more prepared and I will echo what you said, Scott, put in a ticket, ask to be given the preview. Because it, it there are times where we see organizations get caught off guard, uh, get a little too close to the cliff and have to scramble and figure out how do we get, you know, hundreds of people ready to use this new version of Outlook. And we're here kind of saying, try and adopt early. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. So you can get access, you can turn on the toggle button. You can always turn it back off if you need to, but try it there. Go use your, your inbox online for a week. See what you think. You're, there's going to be definite things that you discover and especially things relevant to your department or your organization. And you're going to be poised to be that champion. We need you. We need you champions. So definitely check it out. Do you want to do a quick demo of what opening up, like a sending a new email message would look like? Because I know that this is a little bit different than the kind of the classic version, but it's not really too, too much different, yeah, right? It's really not. So we're, we're kind of used to this kind of, this, you know, the, the compose window overlay. This is a setting you can change. So if you want all of your new emails to pop out into their own window, you can totally do that. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I'll just, I'm going to pop this out. Oh, actually I shouldn't do that because I'm only sharing this one window, but I will, I'll just leave it here. So we'll do a new email and you're going to see the, once you get into this, the the message body. So don't be alarmed if you're here or you're here and you see all these buttons grayed out. Don't worry. Once you're in the body of the message, you're going to see kind of your same, you know, your message tab, your insert tab. You can format your text. You've got some different options, but you're just going to see a few more expanded options. Again, I always like to say this is kind of a, the buttons look different situation. Um, they really haven't taken a lot away. They've definitely given you some new stuff, but it's, it's gonna. I think that one of the biggest look... changes, especially since this is web is the ability to use slash commands now directly within. Oh, and yes. I think that that's something that an everyday user wouldn't necessarily think about using, but just being able to type slash and then it gives you kind of contextual menus to insert files or this is a way that you'll use Copilot as well and just get those in. And one of the things too that the new Outlook does 
is by default is it is going to try and grab from SharePoint or OneDrive. It is not going to by default try to attach physical documents, which if you're in the habit of doing, which I think many people are, you should actually try and get away from that as you start to move to more of a cloud-based world. Yeah. Just due to the amount of space that it takes up, especially on calendars when you're doing cached information in Outlook. So if you're caching 90 days or a year's worth of data in every single meeting invite that you get, has a uh, two, three, four megabyte attachment on it that builds up over time and yeah. it builds up your your overall kind of like cached app data right. on the computer. And, you know, right. uh, not a lot of us are always ha- in problems of running out of space, but especially if you're talking about just smaller dedicated VMs or even kind of a dynamic like pooled VMs is it takes longer to load your profile because you're bringing more of that app data down with it. Yeah, and I, I would say we, you know, In the work world, and again, this leads into our licensing conversation, we're so document, like everything is a document, everything is a file, and Microsoft 365 is looking to expand your horizons and help you not make everything a Word document or an Excel a spreadsheet. There's lots and lots and lots of additional tools that you can use that don't really have a file at all. Um, things like forms, things like these scheduling polls, OneNote, you know, in a team, you know, your team notebook. So rather than, you know, attaching last week's uh, meeting, meeting minutes to every meeting invite you do, you know, all that stuff, there's there are better solutions, more cloud forward solutions that aren't always these you know, files. We still traffic so much in in files. And we really need to start thinking about like, when is this thing that I have not, doesn't really need to be a Word document, doesn't really need to be an Excel spreadsheet. It could be a whiteboard. It could be a a page in a notebook. One other- Those are the, the opportunities that we all need to be sourcing. One other note too, and I get this question, quite a bit when I see new people adopt Outlook is there are theming options to a very similar to the classic version. So Holly, if you wanted to go up to settings real quick and go to kind of the theming area is I think that it's important to bring up one aspect of how the themes work. Oh, and I wonder if I'm not going to be able to see it. Yep. I can slide some screenshots in, but one of the important things from the theming option here is Holly, if it, I, we may see it in real time, but if you choose one of those bottom options on themes where it has like the flower print or like the the moving arm cat toy, you'll see that kind of change at the top where it's blue right now, kind of in that, in the, almost like that area above the ribbon bar. But the other area you will also see it change is across every web app you use. So if you go to portal.office.com or you go to SharePoint or OneDrive is you'll see that update. And some people don't like that. Like they just want it to be an Outlook. So yeah, I can see the Lego blocks up there right now. So (laughs) if you went somewhere else in the Microsoft world, you would see that change yeah. on your portal. And that's not always for everyone. So I, I just like to kind of let people know that that 100%, may happen. 100%. Um, yep. That's, But this is one of those things where it's good, like you're going to start to see just the interconnectedness. You know, each app isn't a silo unto itself. Mm-hmm. It's sort of all uh, referencing each other. So again, engage um, OneDrive, those sorts of things. They have their own unique site. They have their own unique location. But when you using them under your account, because we can store your settings in the cloud, we can, you know, you, you can reference those applications wherever you are. Yeah, you're going to see those changes. Okay. Holly, anything else on the new Outlook other than just, you know, adopt, 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 try it out. If you don't like it, adopt, you can always adopt. go back. It's, it's I, I really think it's not scary. It's just very different. It looks different. There's new, there's some new features there, but I, I just kind of go back to, you know, there was a time when teams didn't exist and, uh, you know, that was a much scarier learning curve. Yep. Outlook is still Outlook. It, it's still Outlook. It's still your email. You can still have your folders. You know, it's just in, it's in a kind of an updated wrapper. Yep. My hope is that um, all of those calls that we would get to like the service desk of your, my Outlook is slow, you know, those sorts of things that that 
is in the past because it's a much more nimble application mm -hmm. in this format. So my hope is that your Outlook is always, may it always be blazing fast.